I want to ask you, sir, on 3G and 4G. Uh, on 3G, if I'm not mistaken, the regulator is currently undertaking certain tests. I think it's linked to the quality of service or the speed uh, because there have been consumer issues on That's that correct. front. And uh, on 4G, of course, we've not heard anything in terms of any major rollouts. W where are we on these two uh, aspects? Yeah, actually, we issued a quality of service uh, regulation, which basically, the provisions are this. If you buy a dongle or you're guaranteed a speed of 1 MB, then, or 2 MB or 5 MB or whatever, then at least 80% of the time, that must be available to you. And the provider, the service provider, must guarantee that because he's charging you for it. It's not coming free. Now, there's some tussle going on between industry and the, the regulator because many of them are uncomfortable. They don't think they will be able to meet it, et cetera, et cetera. They have technical reasons. They have other reasons. For the moment, I am holding my fire. I, mean, I, I think a stage has come where consumers need to be reassured that if they're being paid, if they're paying for something, they're actually getting something at least vaguely close to that. Mm. So that is the answer on 3G. On 4G, I presume you're talking about uh, broadband wireless access. Yes, well. What I hear from the ground is that it's run into three or four ground difficulties and then sheer economic problems. The ground difficulties essentially relate to laying OFC. And laying OFC in urban areas has proven far more difficult than was originally envisaged, notwithstanding the clout of the industrialists. Second, uh, the reluctance, you know, if, even if you didn't have OFC, you, at least you had towers, you had, had an alternative. Uh, in Mumbai, it's hard enough getting towers. People want them dismantled. And in many other states now, getting permissions to set up towers is a huge headache, which is why you're seeing many of the B BWA guys getting into contracts with other tower companies who have towers in place. So the, the, the this is the infrastructure related part of it. That is, if I'm not going to be able to lay, lay the OFC and I can't get the tower, what broadband am I going to deliver? And therefore, these two need resolution. On the other side, the problem is of economics is this, that what people tell me, and I'm not a technical expert, is that the ecosystem has not thrown up reasonably priced uh, devices. Uh, six months ago, eight months ago, they were saying that, look, if you even if you had BWA coming through a wire into your flat, you would need a separate, two or three separate devices. Uh, now, at least, they're saying, no, you may get a single device, but the cost of that device may be very high. The problem is this. In today's world, nobody is going to say, I'll take a pipe into my room and then use five different devices. I don't have the wherewithal. Mm -hmm. Meaning, devices could be different in the form of, I have a TV, I have an iPad. But you can't ask me to buy dedicated mm -hmm. devices to broadband wireless access mm -hmm. over and above those which I already have. Second, if the price is forbidding, then it doesn't matter if the quality of the service is superb and the pricing of that service is very cheap. The, the very cost of uh, buying that device will itself be a deterrent, yeah. which is what has happened in 3G. Mm -hmm. Meaning the fact that smartphones penetration has been so slow has in a sense circumscribed the rate at which data growth on the 3G has taken place. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, how do I put it to you? A car and petrol. If the car costs a million dollars and the petrol is free, you're still not going to drive the car. Mm. So that, that, that's where we are as that's, far as that's, I think, uh, 3G and yeah, 4G is concerned. Yeah. So when I last spoke to you, 
you told me that uh, the worst is over for the telecom industry. And you were of the view that 2014-15 will be the year when it will bounce back. We're pretty much through with half that period. Are you seeing that kind of a yeah, but change actually, on uh, the ground? Actually, you should be telling me, not me telling you. I think, yes, I think most of the companies have bounced back. Top lines have improved. Uh, predatory pricing has ended. Uh, Debt, uh, debt is gradually being retired. Uh, EBITDA margins are growing. Uh, revenues are growing both, for some companies, both on voice very slowly, but hugely on data. Mm -hmm. And on the whole, I think the three or four successful companies are, uh, are on their way to be out of the woods. I would not say they are out of the woods just yet. Mm. The de debt overhang is still huge. Until that debt overhang is cleaned up, mm. uh, there will always be uh, questions. But uh, my own sense is that uh, this year and next year will be good for telecom and for the companies which, uh, uh, which have business models which are viable. Those who are bleeding, primarily because of huge debt or pure sheer mismanagement. The only way out for them is exit, and which is why I told you that unless the M&A, spectrum trading and sharing get through, we're not, going to, we're not going to see that. Do you foresee a stable tariff regime from here on? You said that you know, the predatory pricing has ended. The stable tariff regime, let me put it this way, Tariffs are not going to fall. Voice tariffs are not going to go back to what they were. I think the headline tariff is around one rupee. Actual realization is about 44 paisa. My own sense is that tariffs will gradually creep up year after year at the rate of about three and a half, four paisa per year. And if these guys get greedy, then maybe six. But I think nobody is in a rush to ramp up voice tariffs too quickly because on their books it is clearly indicated that uh, voice revenue growth has slowed down, which means even if your subscribers are growing, the number of minutes of usage is not growing fast enough for you to sustain it. Now, price is a very sensitive factor in the voice market, because the voice market is different from the data market, completely different from the data market. So bottom line guess, A, tariffs will not come down, neither for voices, for voice, nor for data. Two, in all likelihood, voice tariffs will go up, but modestly. And they will grow up modestly for, for the next couple of years. Third, get, rid, get ready for a big surprise that a couple of years from now, data tariffs will start increasing. Because we're going to go through the same problem which the developed world did, but for different reasons. In the developed world, you gave them 15 or 25 megahertz of spectrum. But because living standards were so high, everybody could afford devices, demand for data went through the roof. So the telecom providers who were initially literally giving away the data free, then started apportioning data, rationing data. In India, you've seen data prices fall consistently since 2012. If demand continues to burgeon as it is, and no spectrum is available, no additional spectrum, how can a TSP cater to this demand? They will, it will not. It will not be able to. Then the only solution will be, all right, I used to charge you five rupees for one MB. It's 100 bucks now. Because uh, if you are not willing to pay for it, that other guy is willing to pay for it. So I think that's the, that's the real problem down the road. And you will start seeing it within a, within a year to two years. You'll start seeing pressures of that unless they can sort out ICR by then, which will 
partly delay the problem, but otherwise this is going to be a huge difficulty. I want to talk to you, sir, a little about one of the issues you've been seized of, and uh, there is a paper out there also where you've sought comments on the whole AGR issue. Uh, and linked to it, uh, perhaps, is the entire issue of this whole USO fund, uh, which to my mind has just been a black hole, uh, where, you know, thousands of crores, perhaps when it was started, it had the right intentions, that you wanted to make sure that if you as a private operator aren't going into rural India, we need to provide services there. Uh, but sitting on thousands of crores, uh, and yet almost like levying a tax, so to speak, on telecom companies. It, it, has the time come to relook at this? Well, the consultation paper we've issued is pretty candid and raises this issue. We will have to look at it, so I, but I don't want to prejudge uh, the matter. But as I told you when we met last week, uh, if you are levying a non-tax or mobilizing a non-tax revenue, which goes to the Consolidated Fund of India, is not used for the USOF, then it is essentially doing pure budgetary support, which is what a tax is supposed to do, not exactly, a non-tax. which is why I said it's more like a tax on... So I think that you have a point there and that needs to be carefully considered. The authority is aware of it. We are looking at that. The AGR paper is a much more larger paper. What it's trying to get at is, look, we have seen over the last 20 years litigation after litigation of what goes into AGR, what is the pass through, what goes into GR. And I think a stage has come where we need to clean up the mess, provide simplicity, complete transparency so that on the one hand, government is sure that it does not have to verify or check or anything. It will get its revenues. And if indeed it suspects TSPs of fiddling their books, a simple audit will reveal the results quickly. But you need to simplify the rules. And the choices are many. many. You could just say, move to a regime where you tax on AGR, where you levy a license fee on AGR. Or move to a stay with the AGR regime, but then allow more deductions. Third, if you want to bring everybody under the AGR, the license fee regime, then why should you not think of uh, the input tax credit type of system in VAT, which is that if I've added value and I've paid income tax credit, pass the product on to you, then the input tax credit passes on to you so that when the tax collector comes to you and says that, look, you've already collected 10 bucks from that guy. On my total value, you should only collect 12. Since he's paid 10, I pay you 2, and that's the end of the matter. Mm. So these are some of the very difficult issues on AGR. For over a year, the industry has been asking us, please look at this in the context of unified licensing because it's otherwise a mess. And so we've taken that up suomoto. Uh, that also, I think, the open house is in the 1st of October or something like that. My guess is, again, by the end of October, you will see some sort of recommendations coming from the authority on 